Aha! Today, Peter and Zach's dream has come true. They bought a trailer. Now they're ready to begin their long-planned journey through mystical places all over the country to make their vlog. But first, they need to pack. There are three boxes, but the guys can only take one of them. Which box should they choose? The first one. Take a look at the reflection in the mirror. The second box is empty. And the food in the third box is spoiled. Several cockroaches are crawling around too. Probably not the best company for a road trip. Peter's aunt, Sarah, gave the guys three patchwork quilts for the trip. She said that she made all three of them by hand. But it's a lie. In fact, she made only one quilt and bought the remaining two online. Sarah was embarrassed to admit it because she was famous for sewing everything by hand. Can you tell which blanket is handmade? The third one. Look at this piece of fabric. It's identical to Sarah's skirt. She sewed these two items using the same material. Finally, Zach and Peter hit the road. They headed for the first spot. It was an abandoned library on a hill. Subscribers told the guys many ghost stories about this place. But our vloggers were skeptical and wanted to explore the building on their own. They walked around the library, recording videos and taking Polaroid pics. But they didn't meet any ghosts. When they returned to the trailer and looked through the pictures, they freaked out and locked all the doors. They left this creepy place as soon as possible. What scared them so much? Both of them are in the photo. But then, who took this picture? The guys made a stop at the local coffee shop to get some hot drinks. As soon as they came in, Peter grabbed his camera and started recording. Why? Here's a ghost. The guys ordered sandwiches, but the barista, Fiona, had to prepare online orders first. So she asked the guys to wait for their food for a while. Fiona cut one loaf of bread into four pieces in 12 seconds. How much time does she need to cut the same loaf of bread into five pieces? Sixteen seconds. To get four pieces of bread, she must make three cuts. If it takes her 12 seconds to make three cuts, it means she makes one cut in four seconds. If Fiona wants to cut the bread into five pieces, she needs to make four cuts. Four seconds for each cut makes it 16 seconds in total. Oy, my head's spinning. Zach noticed a fortune teller shop in the basement. It could make great content for the vlog, so he went downstairs. But as soon as Zach entered the shop, all doors and windows disappeared. Wicked Witch offered the guy a deal. She had two identical cards. One of them had escape written on it, while the other said marry me. Zach could pick only one card. If he got the escape card, he'd be free. And if he picked the marry me card, he'd stay with this creepy witch forever. The witch didn't want him to have a chance to escape, so she wrote marry me on both cards. Zach anticipated that the witch would do so, but he still managed to win and escape. How did he do it? He picked a card and dropped it in the fireplace, saying it was an accident. The witch had to reveal the remaining card that said marry me. According to the rules, there had to be two different cards. So the witch had nothing to do but agree that the card Zack had picked and burned must have been the escape card. Peter and Zack continued their journey. In the evening, the guys saw these three hitchhikers not far from a bus stop. They could only pick up one person. Who should they choose? This pretty girl is a werewolf. Hey, look at her toes. She has already begun to transform because it's the full moon. And this harmless-looking elderly lady is a runaway criminal. Take a look at the poster hanging at the bus stop. It's her portrait. As for the guy, he looks pretty harmless. Yeah, his clothes are indeed stained with something red. But that's just some paint because he's an artist. Look, there are art supplies in his backpack. The artist, whose name was George, 
told the guys about another interesting, mysterious place. Hmm. The locals called it the Haunted House. One week ago, George heard strange screams coming from inside. He went to check the house. A minute later, he ran away screaming. What scared him so much? The portrait of this creepy clown is moving! Zack and Peter decided to explore that haunted house. When they entered the building, they didn't see any portraits. But they heard screams coming from the basement. They walked downstairs and found a loudspeaker that replayed the screams over and over again. There was a clown costume in the closet. Zack and Peter found three suspects among the neighbors and asked them just one question. What did you do one week ago? Mr. Daniel said, I was on vacation in Spain for two weeks. We came back yesterday. Jessica said, I have very sensitive skin. I wouldn't spoil it by wearing a clown mask. As for Henry, he said he had been preparing for his tests at college 24-7. Who's lying? <laughs> Jessica. Hmm. Zach and Peter didn't say anything about the clown. But she started making excuses anyway. The guys arrived at the local hospital to film an interview with the famous professor, Dr. Thompson. But first, he had to help four people. Kyle complained, I'm misophonic. I wash my hands a hundred times a day. Kelly explained, I'm afraid of heights. I can't even ride a bike. Fred complained, I have a strong fear of water. I can't even look at a faucet. And Jenny claimed that she had claustrophobia. She always fainted in elevators. Dr. Thompson knew for sure that only one of these people told the truth. Can you tell who? Fred can't be afraid of water. He has an aquarium with fish in his house. Jenny lives in a tiny van, so she can't have claustrophobia. And Kyle's apartment is too messy for someone who has a fear of dirt and germs. So it's Kelly. She sleeps on the floor, which is normal for someone with an abnormal fear of heights. Next stop, creepy caves. Zack and Peter went to see ancient ruins in the middle of the woods. Many people had disappeared there. The guys heard weird screams coming from the cave, ran toward the sound, and got lost. Suddenly, they saw three tunnels. The first tunnel was filled with fire. A hungry vampire was waiting in the second tunnel. And the third tunnel was filled with poisonous apples. Which way should they choose? The third tunnel is safe. The guys don't have to eat those apples. After their epic adventure in the cave, Zack and Peter went to the supermarket to buy some groceries. I'm guessing the apples made them hungry. Can you see a ghost in this room? Here it is! Peter and Zack found out that people had seen some zombies in this abandoned town. So they decided to make a stop there and check for themselves. The town looked empty. The guys were very disappointed. But suddenly, a crowd of hungry zombies popped out of nowhere and started chasing them. The guys ran into a hospital and locked the door. Zombies began breaking the door down. Luckily, a helicopter with a rescue team arrived quickly. It was going to land on the roof. Zack and Peter needed to get there as soon as possible. Help them find the shortest way. Here's the way. After saving the guys, the rescue team invited Peter and Zack to go skydiving together. Ooh, yeah. They agreed and put on parachutes. They took this picture inside the plane right before the jump. Can you tell which of these people is in danger? This man over here, he's wearing a regular backpack instead of a parachute. The guys made a stop on the shore of a famous mysterious lake. They went fishing. Suddenly, a mermaid jumped out of the water and dragged Zack into the lake. Peter jumped into the water to rescue his friend. Finally, he found Zack wrapped in seaweed on the rocks in the middle of the lake. Three mermaids had gathered around Zack and were singing their songs. When they noticed Peter, they said, We'll set your friend free if you guess which one of us is not a real mermaid. Can you help the guy? (laughs) 
Mm, this lady over there, her tail isn't real. Sometime later, Peter's aunt, Sarah, called them. She was very upset. She found out that she had left her diamond ring in the guy's trailer. Hmm. Peter found the ring and said, no worries, we're going to send it back to you. But there was a problem. If he sent it by post without locking the box, the ring would be stolen. Both Peter and Sarah had some locks, but neither of them had the key that would open the lock of the other. Still, they managed to make it work and Sarah got her ring back. How did they do it? Peter locked the box with the ring and sent it to Sarah. When Sarah received the box, she added her lock and sent it back. Peter received the box and removed his lock. Then he sent the box back to Sarah. She opened the lock with her key and got the ring. Man, these folks lead complicated lives, don't you think? Kitty entered a bookstore to get some art supplies. At one point, she met an elf and accidentally stepped on his foot. Ow! The elf got very angry and teleported her to his fairy world. He said, I'm Noah. Welcome to my world, you ill-mannered lady. If you can solve all my riddles, I'll help you find your way home. But if you don't, you'll turn into a tree and stay in this enchanted forest forever. So here comes the first riddle. Jen and Dobby have four daughters, and each of the daughters also has a brother. How many people are there in the family? Kitty cracked this riddle easily. What about you? The correct answer is 7. Noah took Kitty to the elf village. There they met Mr. Rosbury. He was very upset. Someone had stolen all berries from his trees. Noah suggested Kitty should find the thief. She questioned four suspects. Alice said, I'm allergic to berries and stay away from them. Mia said that she'd been busy all morning helping her granny pick apples in her garden. Javier confessed that he had been on a secret date. He refused to reveal the name of his girlfriend. And Fiona said, Are you kidding? I love my manicure too much to spoil it by picking berries. So, who's the thief? Alice. She's eating strawberry ice cream, which means she lied about her allergy. Next, Noah took Kitty for a walk through a magic field. There are 50 cows in this field and 28 chickens. How many didn't? Kitty figured this riddle out immediately. What about you? The correct answer is 30. It's a play on words. 20 cows ate chickens, which means that 30 cows didn't. The guy's next stop was a jewelry store. The local jeweler, Jonas, had just finished making a beautiful diamond necklace. He put it on the window so that everyone could admire his masterpiece and left for lunch. But when he returned, the necklace was gone. Surprise, surprise. Kitty questioned three suspects. The jeweler's assistant, David, said, I was cleaning silver in the next room and didn't hear anyone enter the store. Billy, who owned a chocolate store one floor below, said, I've spent the entire day with my wife. We've been celebrating our 15th anniversary. And Nina, the cleaning lady, said, oh, I've been cleaning the roof and singing when the crime happened. I didn't hear anything. Who's the thief? Billy. Look at his selfie with his wife. She's wearing the stolen necklace. Okay, but how did he steal it? He has a book, Magic Portals, on the shelf in his store. A postman found an elderly stargazer, Mr. Green, unconscious on the floor in his own house. Kitty questioned the key suspect, Mike. He was the only person who had been seen near Mr. Green's house the day before. Kitty asked him what he had been doing the previous night. Mike replied, I spent the whole evening helping my friend to build a house. We finished late at night. I was passing by Mr. Green's house on my way home. I looked into the window and saw him lying on the floor. I was shocked and called the police. Kitty inspected the house and told the officer to arrest Mike. Why?
Mr. Green was found on the ground floor. But his house doesn't have any ground floor windows, which means Mike couldn't see anything through the window. Noah took Kitty to his garden. He said that elf gardens were a little different compared to human ones. Kitty noticed five weird details right away. Can you see them too? It's snowing, but the flowers are blooming. The trees don't cast any shadows, but Kitty does. The rainbow in the sky is upside down. All squirrels are wearing suits. They usually don't do that in human forests. And this butterfly is talking on the phone. Noah invited Kitty for dinner, but they gotta cook it first. He gave Kitty an old recipe and said she could find all the ingredients in the garden. But the recipe is coded with the help of these symbols. Can you help Kitty find all the ingredients? Here comes the first one. It's a potato, and it's hiding over here. Here's the second ingredient. Olives! They're growing over there. What about this puzzle? Any ideas? Cabbage. It's over there. Can you recognize this one? Coconut. Here it is. The next one. Can you crack it? Pineapple. Great job. What about this puzzle? It's a carrot. And since it's an elf's garden, carrots are growing on trees. Can you crack this code? It's a peach, and Kitty can get it over there. Here comes the next ingredient. Any ideas? Pepper. It's over there. And last but not least, can you crack it? Broccoli. Great job! There's only one broccoli head in this garden, and it's hiding over there. After a delicious dinner, Noah offered Kitty to choose a guest room. He gave her three options, but only one of them was safe. Option number one, a soft bed in the attic. Here's the second option, a cozy sofa in the basement. And the third option is a hammock on an open balcony. Unfortunately, mutant mosquitoes arrive every night. Their poison is safe for elves, but not for humans. Which room should Kitty choose? Springs stick out of the first bed. That doesn't look safe. And the sofa is full of bed bugs. Probably not the best company for a sleepover. So Kitty should choose the hammock. She can use this mosquito net to hide from the annoying insects. Next morning, Noah had an appointment. He offered Kitty to meet later in a fancy elf cafe. Four waiters welcomed her when she arrived there. But one of them was fake. Can you guess who? See? This guy is a criminal. Noah was late, so Kitty ordered breakfast without him and went to the bathroom. The girl left her bag and her wallet on the table. Don't ask me why. When she came back, Noah was sitting at the table. Her food had arrived and her bag was still there. But the money was missing from her wallet. The restaurant security found three suspects. Noah said that he had just arrived. He hadn't seen anything suspicious. 
The waitress said, I brought the food, but I didn't touch the wallet. The cleaner said that she'd wiped the table, but hadn't touched the wallet. The guard found some fingerprints on the wallet, but they all belonged to Kitty. So, who stole the money? The cleaner. She had her gloves on. That's why she didn't leave any fingerprints. Kitty didn't have any elf money, so Noah offered to pay for her meal. But first, she had to crack this riddle. What begins with T, ends with T, and has T in it? Kitty solved this puzzle easily. What about you? The correct answer is a teapot. Kitty found a beautiful diamond tiara on the sink in the ladies' room while she was washing her hands. Three elves showed up to claim it. Jim said, This tiara belongs to my mother. We've been passing it on from generation to generation for ages. I noticed that it was gone after visiting the bathroom. Fiona said that she had won this tiara in a beauty contest. She even showed Kitty a picture. Jessica said, If this tiara is missing one small emerald, then it's mine. I lost the gem at a party last summer. Kitty gave the tiara to Jessica. Why? Well, Jim wouldn't have been allowed in the ladies' room. The stones in Fiona's tiara are blue, not green. And Jessica was the only one who knew about the defect. Kitty entered an elf gift store to get some souvenirs for her family. Three magic creatures entered the store after her. Everything was fine until, suddenly, Kitty heard a loud scream. She turned around and saw an elf lying face down on the table. She quickly called the police and reported the incident. An officer arrived and asked the other three customers what they'd been doing when they heard the scream. The goblin said, I was picking out postcards from the front display. The mermaid was chasing the perfect souvenir mug. She dropped it when she screamed. The pieces were still on the floor. And the wizard said, I was checking my horoscope on my phone. I'm a Venus by Zodiac, you know. My astrologist promised that today would be the most peaceful day of my life. Yeah, right. Can you help Kitty find the criminal? It's the wizard. Venus isn't an astrological sign. The police arrested the wizard. He got so mad at Kitty that he turned her into a frog. Noah tried all the spells from his books, but nothing helped. So he took Kitty to the jail to beg for the wizard's help. There, Noah saw two prisoners. He knew for sure that only one of them would manage to escape. Ooh. The second one. He has a spoon without a handle. He must have used it to make a knife to open the door. The wizard agreed to lift his spell. But he had one condition. The guys had to crack his riddle. How many months of the year have 28 days? Can you help Kitty out? The correct answer is all of them. Noah took Kitty to the local magic store. Kitty asked him what he wanted to buy. Noah answered this way. It's tall when it's young, and it's short when it's old. What is it? Have you guessed? It's a candle. Noah lit the candle and prepared to send Kitty back to the human world. But he had one last riddle for her. Kitty had to say a secret number code to get home. Here's a hint. The code contains three positive numbers. You can either add these numbers or multiply them. The result will be the same. What are these numbers? The correct answer is 1, 2, and 3. Great job! Blue ocean, golden sand, green palm trees, fresh fruit. This place is like a paradise. 
It's good that Luke finally went on vacation. He's sunbathing, drinking cocktails, and enjoying life. Such a perfect day. Maybe too perfect. Luke's smile disappears. Nothing is real. Two signs indicate that Luke is dreaming right now. What are these signs? The first thing is that there are two suns in the sky. The second sign is that the ocean has no waves. Luke gets scared. He realizes he's sleeping. At this moment, a giant kraken comes out of the ocean. It stretches huge tentacles towards Luke and screams out like a siren. How can Luke escape from it? Where should he run? There's no need to run anywhere. This is a dream, and the Kraken can help Luke wake up. The monster grabs the guy, and... He opens his eyes and realizes he's in a laboratory. He was caught a few days ago. A group of people have been conducting strange experiments on him all this time. It wasn't the Kraken he heard. It was a real siren. Flashing red lights illuminate the lab. The room itself is a mess. Lots of stuff on the floor, overturned tables. There are no people, only pictures of some scientists on the wall. There should be a key to the door among all these documents and garbage. Quickly, help Luke find it and escape. And the key is hidden, not here. It's not needed, the door isn't locked, see? Luke is about to leave the lab, but wait, what does he need to take with him? Look around the room. He can only take one item. Luke should opt for the shoes. They're going to be useful outside. Luke puts on a pair of boots and gets out of the lab. He's in a long corridor. He sees several guards ahead. They start chasing after him. Luke runs away in the opposite direction. There are three ways in front of him. One corridor is filled with toxic gases. The second way is a bottomless dark abyss. The third corridor is so hot that the walls are glowing red. What should Luke choose? The second hall with a chasm. See how the light gets reflected from the abyss? This means there's a glass floor covering it, and Luke can walk on it. Luke runs through the second hall and finds himself trapped. Several guards are standing there and everyone is looking at him. It seems like there's no chance of getting out, but wait a minute, the guards are not dangerous. Why? They're motionless because they're either well-done wax figures or real people who can't move for some reason. Luke leaves the room. And now, he's in a long corridor again. The doors close behind him. Guards are rushing towards him from the hall. And doctors are running from the other direction. What should Luke do? Hurry up, help the guy before they notice him. Do you see a laundry basket? There are white coats there. Luke should dress up as a doctor and walk past the guards. The guy enters one of the many doors and finds himself in a large room for experiments. This is where they keep their test subjects. There are several locked cells with people sitting inside. They ask Luke to release them. Unfortunately, he can only free one prisoner. But who? A werewolf is locked in that cell. An electrical human is in another. A seemingly ordinary girl is locked in the third one. In the furthest cage, there's a guy with a shark's mouth. Luke should save the girl. Come on, all the other prisoners are scary monsters. Did you expect a trick? Sometimes the simplest answer is the right one. Luke opens the cell. The girl's name is Jessie, but she doesn't want to go with Luke. She doesn't believe him. Why? Because Luke is wearing a lab coat. He explains to Jesse that he put on these clothes to remain unnoticed. 
He's as much of a prisoner here as she is. Jesse finally believes him. Together, they escape from the lab, but the guards and scientists notice them. Our heroes are trapped. There are three rooms in front of them. An electrical current is running non-stop through the first one. Three ferocious lions are in the second room. There's a fire raging in the third one. How should Luke and Jesse escape? They don't have to enter any of these rooms. In the corridor above them, there is an open ventilation hatch. These guys should help each other get in there. They crawl through the vent for a few minutes. Finally, they reach the elevators. But the heads of two creatures have got stuck in the elevator doors. One of them is a werewolf. The other is a zombie. Jesse and Luke can only save one of them. Who will survive without their help? The guys save the werewolf because the zombie is no longer alive anyway. He can survive even without his head. The werewolf runs away while Luke and Jesse get into the elevator. The laboratory is located deep underground, so they go 40 floors up. The doors open, and they find themselves inside an old hut. Our heroes go outside and see a winter forest. Jesse and Luke run forward as fast as they can. They hear dogs barking and people screaming. The scientists are chasing them. The guys come to a crossroads. The first way leads to a lake. At the beginning of the second road, there's a sign, beware of wolves. The third road leads to a high cliff. Where should they go? It's winter now, so the lake is frozen. Luke and Jesse run across the lake and find themselves in a clearing. Two guys are standing there. Hey. Both of them seem normal. They ask Luke and Jesse if they can come along. Luke feels that one of the guys is not who he claims to be. Hey. How can he figure out which one it is? If you pay attention to the footprints in the snow, you'll see how this guy appeared here. But there are no footprints near the second guy. How did he get here? It's suspicious. Jesse and Luke agree to take along the first guy. His name is Max. He says he's also escaped from the lab. He knows there's a road somewhere nearby, so they decide to find it. They wander through the forest for several hours. No one seems to be chasing them anymore. But now, they have a new problem. They're cold and hungry. Sometime later, they see a small house where they can warm up. But the door is locked. Where's the key? See this scarecrow next to the forest? The key is in its hand. The guys open the door and find food and clothes. They rest, eat, and get warmer. Soon, they're ready to set off. There's an old car in the backyard. There's even some gasoline in its tank. But when Luke is driving it out of the yard, the car runs over a nail. The tire is punctured. Now they have to walk again. It's getting darker and colder. Despite warm clothes, our guys start freezing. How can our heroes keep warm? There are old dry leaves, moss, and grass under the snow. Luke, Jesse, and Max put all this inside their clothes. Yeah, they stain their t-shirts and sweaters, but they also create an additional layer of protection against the cold. Finally, they're near the edge of the forest. Through tree branches, the guys see a road illuminated by moonlight. They're saved. Now they only need to catch a car. Max, Luke, and Jesse walk along the highway and finally see headlights. Luke raises his arm to stop the car. A small pickup truck is slowing down. The driver rolls down the window and asks if the guys need help. Jesse quickly tells him everything that has happened to them. The driver asks them to get in the car, but Luke doesn't want to. He's sure that this man is one of the bad guys. How has Luke figured it out? When Luke woke up in the lab, he paid attention to the pictures of the scientists on the wall. This driver is one of them. The guys run back into the forest where they come across a pack of wolves. The hungry animals surround our heroes. 
One of the wolves is about to attack, but a loud howl scares it, and it runs away. A monster covered with fur comes out of the bushes. Max screams and is about to run away, but Jesse and Luke look calm. Why? Because this is the werewolf our heroes rescued from the elevator. They follow the monster. It leads them to a safe place. This is a small village hidden deep in the forest. Creatures that don't look like humans live here. Werewolves, bird people, merfolk, and humanoid trees. They used to be people, but the scientists changed the structure of their DNA. Now these creatures are going to destroy the laboratory to take revenge. While Luke, Jesse, and Max are resting, you have time to check your score and find out how useful you've been in this adventure. 0 to 3 points Luke wouldn't have gotten out of the lab if he had listened to you. It's still difficult for you to get out of tricky situations. Maybe you were too nervous. Or perhaps you should work on your ability to focus. 4 to 7 points You've been helping the guys get out of trouble pretty well, but still, this is not enough to become a team leader. You'll definitely get better after a little more practice. 8 to 11 points You can find a way out of almost any difficult situation and deal with any problem. Just a bit more and you will become a perfect leader. 12 to 15 points You're a real hero! You can successfully overcome any difficulties and lead large groups of people. Don't lose your focus, it'll help Luke and his friends in their next adventures. 16 to 17 points. You're the best of the best. Problems don't scare you, they entertain you. Alrighty, it's Math O'Clock here, and I have a couple of fun riddles for you to solve. Let's start with a cheesy one. All right. Here's a circle. How many sides does the circle have? There are two, the inside and the outside. It was Aviana's birthday, and she went to buy herself an ebook she'd been dreaming about. The ebook and the case cost $150 in total. If the ebook was $100 more expensive than the case, how much did each item cost? Alright, let's say the case cost X. Then, the ebook cost X plus 100. Together, they cost $150. So, X, the case, plus X plus 100, the ebook, are equal to 150. Now, solve the equation. Two X's equal to 150 minus 100, or 50. So, one X is equal to 25. So, the case cost $25, and the ebook cost 125. Well, that adds up. Now, to celebrate her birthday, Aviana wants to go to the movies. She has two friends whom she wants to take with her. A movie ticket costs $8. What is cheaper? Go to the movies with each friend separately or with the two of them together. Of course, it's cheaper to go with the two of them together. If she goes there two times separately with each friend, she'll have to buy a ticket for herself twice. So, she'll buy four tickets. Oh. But if they go together, she will only buy three tickets. Yes! Five friends met for the first time in five years. Each one shook hands with each person in the group, but only once. How many handshakes were made? No handshakes were repeated. Let's see it like this. The first friend shook the hands of the four remaining people once. Then the second friend had already shared a handshake with the first person, so they shook hands with three more people. The third friend had shaken hands with the first two, so he shook hands with two more people. And then, finally, friends four and five shook hands too. Four plus three plus two plus one is equal to ten. So there were ten handshakes. Brinley has to sneak into her mom's computer to delete some emails she had accidentally sent her. Ooh. Mom has a poor memory, so she always has notes with her passcodes. Luckily, the note is right on the desk again. What's the passcode? Every number equals the number of circles in it. So the last number is equal to 3. 
It's a 5-digit number, so try 82193. Danica and Elora are best friends who live in different parts of town but study in the same college. Every morning they leave their houses at the same time and first meet at a cafe to drink some coffee before classes. Danica goes there by car and Elora goes by bike. When they met, which girl was closer to Elora's home? When they meet, they're in the same spot, so no one is closer than the other one. Mrs. Marshall owns a factory that produces office desks. Four workers can build four desks in four hours. If she hires four more people, how many desks will eight workers produce in eight hours? If four workers produce four desks in four hours, it means that each worker produces one desk in four hours. So, eight workers will produce eight desks in four hours, or 16 desks in eight hours. Maya has four pens, a blue one, a black one, a red one, and a green one. They lay on the table in some order. Here are some hints. 1. The green one is somewhere in the middle. 2. The blue one is to the left of the black one and to the right of the red one. 3. The red pen is right next to the blue one. So, what's the order of the pens? Green is somewhere in the middle. Since blue has some other colors on both sides of it, it means it's in the middle too. Let's decide which one is where. If the green pen is in position 2, then the blue one takes position 3. We know that the blue one is on the left of the black one, so black takes position 4, and red must be in position 1. But it doesn't fit, because the last condition is that the red and blue ones are next to each other. So let's switch the green and blue. Now blue is right next to red, but it's still to the left of black. So the right order is red, blue, green, black. Yvonne cuts one baguette into four pieces in 12 seconds. How much time will she need to cut the same baguette into eight pieces? Twenty-eight seconds. To cut a baguette into four pieces, she must make three cuts. If it takes her 12 seconds to make three cuts, it means that she makes one cut in four seconds. So, if she now wants to cut it into eight pieces, she needs to make seven cuts. So, seven cuts, four seconds each, would take 28 seconds. Ellery came back home with her term grades. She got all A's but three, all B's but four, and all C's but five. So, how many A's, B's, and C's did she get? Let's start with A's. They are all but three. So there are three B's and C's together. Which is either two C's and one B, or two B's and one C. Let's start with the first option. If it's the case, there are four A's and C's. If there are two C's, then she has two A's too. I mean, also. The condition all C's but five tells us that if there's one B, there must also be four A's, not two. So it can't be. If there are two B's and one C, then from all B's but 4 and one C, there are three A's. From all C's but 5 and 2B, there again must be three A's. So he has three A's, two B's, and one C. Nice work, Ellery! You are outside a room with three switches in the off position. One of the switches turns on the light bulb in the room. You can turn on as many switches as you want, but you can only walk into the room once. How can you find out which switch turns on the light? Turn two random switches on and wait a couple of minutes. Then turn one of them off and walk into the room. If the light is still on, then the controlling switch is the one you left in the on position. If there's no light, touch the light bulb. If it's hot, then the controlling switch is the one you just turned off. If the light bulb is cold, that switch is the one you didn't turn on. Every Sunday, Mrs. Adams gives her daughter's pocket money. 
half of the whole amount goes to the oldest daughter, Stella. The second sister, Ashley, gets half of the amount Stella gets. Eleanor gets one-sixth of the total amount, and the remaining $10 goes to the youngest daughter, Sierra. How much money does Mrs. Adams give away? Seems like Stella gets one half of the money, Ashley gets half of a half, which is one quarter of the original sum, and Eleanor gets one sixth. They're all a fraction of twelves. So Ella gets six twelves, Ashley gets three twelves, and Eleanor gets three twelves. Together, it's eleven twelves, which means that Sierra gets one twelfth, which is ten bucks. So Stella gets $60, Ashley gets $30, Eleanor gets $20, and the whole sum is $120. Hey, if I were Sierra, I would complain. Annabeth is going by train to visit her best friend, Brooke. The train is 500 feet long, and it's moving at a speed of 500 feet a minute. And it's now traveling through a 500-foot long tunnel. How long will it take for the train to go through the tunnel? When the train goes into the tunnel, it will take exactly one minute for its head to reappear on the other side. But the rest of the train should get out of there, too. Once the head of the train is out, the back of the train just entered the tunnel, and it'll need another minute to travel through the tunnel. So the train will need two minutes in total. An elf hired a fairy to take care of his garden for a week. As a daily payment, the fairy takes one inch of a candy cane. The elf has a 7-inch candy cane in one piece, but the fairy wants to be paid every day because fairies don't trust elves. The elf has a knife that can only make two cuts. How can he manage? He should make two cuts and divide the candy cane into the pieces of 1 7th, 2 7th, and 4 7th. The first day, he'll give her the 1 7th piece. The second day, he'll give her the 2 7th piece, and will take the 1 7th piece back. After the third day, he will give her the 1 7th piece back. After the fourth day, he gets back the 1 7th piece and 2 7th pieces, and gives her 1 4 7th piece instead. Then he gives her 1 7th. On the sixth day, instead of 1 7th, she gets the 2 7th piece, and on the last day, he gives her the final 1 7th piece. Of course, this whole thing goes kablooey if the fairy eats the candy during the week. <laughs> well, it's the fairy's grandpa's birthday today. She wants to visit him and bring him birthday candy canes. Her grandpa lives in a different town, and there are three gates to cross on the way. At every gate, there is a guard. To cross, the fairy has to pay a fee of half of the candy cane she has. But she gets one candy cane back. What's the minimum number of candy canes the fairy should take from home to make sure she arrives at her grandpa's with two candy canes for him? She should take just two. At every gate, she'll have to give away half, which is one, and she'll be getting that one back. Ooh, tasty! Brad has recently downloaded a dating app and found three beautiful ladies right away. Fiona is an art dealer from San Francisco. She has never had a serious relationship before, but she would like to settle down. Mary is a vegan, yoga teacher, and human rights enthusiast. She loves French cheese and enjoys watching sunsets on the pier. Betty is a firefighter. In her spare time, she writes songs and performs them with her music band. Brad likes them all equally. Can you give him advice on who he should invite on a real offline date? Look at this wedding picture in Fiona's profile. She's the bride, but she claimed she had never been married. Mary is also a liar. Vegans don't eat cheese, so Brad should text Betty. As soon as Betty received a text from Brad, she ran to the bathroom to get ready for the date. She got her hair done and took out several lipsticks. Betty is a tomboy, which is why she uses makeup very rarely. Can you help her choose the right lipstick for her date? This lipstick is way too old. 
Look at the date. It was made in 1999 and expired a long time ago. And there's a spider inside this lipstick. Betty should choose the second one. Meanwhile, Brad took a shower and prepared to put on his favorite white shirt. But when he pulled it out of the closet, he discovered that someone had stained it with chocolate. Brad questioned his three brothers. Jim said he'd been cooking dinner in the kitchen. He didn't even come into Brad's room that day. Bill said that he entered Brad's room about an hour before to borrow a charger for his phone. And Mike said he'd been partying with his girlfriend all day and had just returned home. Who is lying? Bill, if he borrowed a charger one hour ago, why is his phone still at 1%? Brad decided to prank his brother Bill and cut two holes in his t-shirt. How many holes does the t-shirt have now? Eight. These two holes are cut through the t-shirt. That makes four holes in total. Plus, there are two holes for the arms, one for the head, and one at the bottom of the t-shirt. Betty and Brad met in a restaurant. It was love at first sight. A waiter came over and said, Good evening. What would you like to eat? Betty answered, I'd like something that is red, but it can be green at times, and sometimes it's yellow. The waiter cracked her riddle immediately and brought her the food she'd ordered. What was it? An apple. Brad liked the game and offered the waiter one more riddle. It can be red and it can be green. It can be black or it can be white. It tastes delicious with other dishes, but not on its own. In a minute, the waiter brought Brad his order. Have you guessed what it was? Pepper. After dinner, Brad and Betty went for a walk in the park. They were so focused on each other that they got completely lost. They began looking for a way out and came to this weird crossroad. There were four different roads. Each road had a sign, but the signs had no words. Still, Brad and Betty knew which path to take. What about you? This one. It's the only right hand. Five months later, Betty moved in with Brad. They shared a family house with Brad's three brothers. One day, Betty got a new longboard as a gift for Brad's birthday. It was a surprise, so she locked it in a basement and went to buy some groceries for dinner. When she returned, the longboard wasn't there. She realized that one of the four brothers must have pulled a prank on her. Brad said he hadn't seen anything. Jim said he'd noticed the longboard while walking past the basement but he'd been in a hurry to get to his training. Mike said he had spent the day downstairs baking cookies for his scientific club. And Bill said he'd been on a business trip. Who is behind the mysterious disappearance? Jim, Betty locked the room. It means he couldn't see the longboard unless he broke in. Brad's brothers came home after work and met Brad in the kitchen. The guy was anxious because Betty was missing. The brothers asked him to tell them everything in detail. Brad said, Well, she made me a birthday cake with ice cream this morning. I wanted to try it, but she said we'd eat it in the evening. We argued a bit. Then I went to work. When I got back, she was gone. As soon as the brothers heard Brad's story, they called him a liar. Why? He said Betty had made the cake in the morning. Then why hasn't the ice cream melted yet? Brad got a job as a chemistry teacher. Wait, who stole his money? Brad found only one person's fingerprints on the wallet, his own. He questioned his three colleagues. Math teacher Jennifer said that she'd been having lunch. History teacher Becky said, I didn't feel well yesterday, so I went home early. And English teacher Sam said that he'd been checking his students' homework in his classroom. Who is the thief? The history teacher. 
She used gloves to steal the money and then threw them in the trash. Betty and Brad were walking down the street. Suddenly, they met a weird-looking guy. He introduced himself as a magician and asked, Do you guys want to get rich? Crack this three-digit code, and the money is yours. He gave them a heavy suitcase with a combination lock and a piece of paper with this riddle. A. 548. In the first line, one number is correct and well-placed. B. 530. In the second line, nothing is correct. C. 157. In the third line, two numbers are correct but in the wrong places. D. 806. In the fourth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. E. 647. And in the fifth line, one number is correct but in the wrong place. Can you help the guys? You can use different approaches to crack this riddle. The easiest one is to start with statement B. None of these digits are correct. Therefore, we can exclude numbers 5, 3, and 0. In statement C, we're told that two numbers are correct, but in the wrong places. We can conclude that numbers 1 and 7 are in the final code, but we still don't know the order. Now let's take a look at statements D and E. In both of them, one number is correct, but in the wrong place. We already know that 7 is in the code. It means the remaining digit can't be 6. Then, it must be 8. Look again at statement A. Since the correct number is 8, it must also be correctly placed. In statement C, we have two correct numbers, but they're in the wrong places. Since the third position in the code is already occupied by 8, we can only have one option. 7 should go first, and 1 should be second. Then the correct code is 718. Brad and Betty opened the suitcase. It had $50 million inside. They quit their jobs and went on vacation right away. They checked into a fancy hotel and went to their room to get some rest after a long, exhausting flight. In the evening, they went downstairs to have dinner in a cute Chinese restaurant. But one of the guests is not human. Can you spot who it is? Take a closer look at this guy's plate. It doesn't look like human food at all. When Betty and Brad returned to their room after the meal, they discovered that all their money and gadgets were gone. Oh, no. The hotel security manager asked three guests the same question. What were you doing within the last two hours? Dan said that he had spent all evening in the swimming pool area. Courtney said she'd been chilling in her room with her besties and had nothing to do with the robbery. And Henry said he had just returned from a party in another part of the city. Who's the thief? Courtney, the security manager, didn't mention any robbery, but she started making excuses straight away. Brad decided to jump with a parachute, but he landed not as successfully as he had expected. As soon as Betty found out about the accident, she rushed to the hospital. In the room, she saw an unconscious person, completely in bandages. She asked a doctor who was passing by, Sir, please let me in. It's my boyfriend. But the doctor told her that the patient was a woman. Who is right? It's a man. Look at the name tag on his bed. Brad got well pretty quickly, and Becky took him on a romantic trip to an ancient castle. They were walking around the place and taking pictures, but suddenly, all the doors slammed shut. The guys were trapped inside. Brad found a door with a four-digit combination lock, and Betty found this piece of paper on the floor. Can you help the guys crack the code and escape? The correct code is STOP. Take the first letter of September, the sixth letter of August, the first letter of October, and the second letter of April, and you'll get the word STOP. <laughs> I've got a tricky riddle for you today. This is the question Elon Musk asks people who come to job interviews. Do you think you can solve it? Okay, let's check. I am somewhere on the surface of Earth. From the place where I stand, I walk one mile south, then one mile west, and then one mile north. I end up exactly where I started. Where am I?
That's it. The interview has started. Will you get hired by Elon Musk? You can pause the video if you need more time to think. Mm. The trickiest part is that there may be several answers. One of them is that you're at the North Pole. Let's draw the trajectory. From the North Pole, you walk one mile south, then one mile west, and after that, one mile north. Look, it takes you back exactly where you are. It doesn't work with the South Pole, because from there, you can't go south. But how about drawing a circle close to the South Pole, which is exactly one mile long? Now, go up from that circle, one mile to the north. Right, we can start here. So from this spot, we go one mile south, we reach the circle, then we can go one mile west, walking along the entire circle and ending up in the same spot. After that, we go one mile to the north again and end up exactly where we started. It can get even better. Let's draw a circle near the South Pole that's one half mile long. Again, you can start one mile away from it. You go one mile to the south, reach the circle, go one mile west, you'll end up where you started, but you'll need to walk around the circle two times. The same works with a circle that's one-third of a mile long. You'll just walk around it three times in a row. It works with pretty much any other length of the circle, as long as it's 1 divided by n miles long, where n is a whole number. This way, after walking one mile south, you'll reach the circle, go around it n times, and then move one mile north. Every time, you'll come back to where you started. So, have you passed the interview? If not, no worries. I have some other riddles for you to practice. Off we go! A monkey, a squirrel, and a lizard are about to race up a coconut palm. Who will be the first to reach bananas? None of them! They'll be climbing the coconut tree. There are no bananas there. Leah, Danny, Callie, and Rhea stand one behind another this way. Leah can see Danny and Callie. Danny can see Callie. And Callie and Rhea can't see anyone. They're all wearing hats. The girls only know there are two black hats and two white hats. Any of them can shout out the color of their hat, and if it's right, they will all win. Who's going to be the first to figure out the color of her hat? Leah sees Danny and Callie. If both of them had hats of the same color, she'd know that for sure her hat was a different color. But they are black and white, so she can't be sure about her own hat. It means she'll stay silent. Danny will understand that since Leah is silent, her and Callie's hats are of different colors. She can see that Callie's hat is black, so she'll understand that her hat must be white. Kiana was having a vacation, and she decided to walk from Los Angeles to San Francisco to clear up her mind a bit. Wow, that's a walk. She only had one backpack and some money with her. Halfway through, she met three other travelers walking toward her, and each of them had a pet, a cat, a dog, and a guinea pig. How many creatures were walking to San Francisco? Just one, Kiana. The other travelers and their animals were going in the opposite direction, from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Oakley was participating in a game show. If she got the last question right, she'd get a big amount of money. Look at this picture of a bus that's somewhere on the road between New York and Boston. The question is, which city is the bus heading for? It seems like there's nothing in the picture that can help you figure it out. But it's not exactly so. You can see no door. It means that it's on the other side of the bus. And since bus doors are always on the right side, the vehicle must be facing us with its left side. This means it's going to Boston. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She tried to find her way back home, but instead she stumbled across a witch's house. She petted the cat she saw there and asked the witch to take her home. The witch was busy cleaning and had a riddle for Esme. There were five parts of a chain, and each of them had three links. What was the minimum number of links the witch should open to make it a one-piece chain? If you try to attach all the parts of a chain to one another, you'll need four links. 
But there's a way to fulfill the task by using just three links. Take one of the pieces and open its links. Then use them to connect the remaining four parts of the chain. A long time ago, in one old kingdom, there was a king who made a bizarre law every Friday. His new law was that every man in the kingdom had to shave off his beard. Otherwise, this person would be exiled. But in the kingdom, there was just one hairdresser. Everyone went to this professional. But the hairdresser had no one to go to. Mm. Still, everyone managed to follow the rules and no one was exiled. How is it possible? Well, the hairdresser was a woman. She didn't have a beard to shave. Hmm. Another week, another law. This time, the king was in a good mood. So he declared, Today, I partially forgive the prisoners in our jail. They'll have to serve only half of their sentence. But there were three prisoners who had been given a life sentence. How can you make sure that they serve only half of their sentence? They should be released every other day. This day, they'll spend one day in jail, the next in freedom. Then they go back, and so on, for the rest of their lives. This way, half of the time, they will be free. Yvonne had three boxes with markers, a green one, a blue one, and a purple one. In the purple box, there were twice more markers than in the blue one. One day, Yvonne threw away nine markers from the left box. Then she put half of the remaining markers in the green box. Can you tell the color of the left box? Since Yvonne took the markers in the green box, it can't be green. If the purple box had twice more markers than the blue one, then the number of markers inside was even. If she had taken 9 out of the purple box, the number of the remaining markers would be uneven, and Yvonne wouldn't be able to take half of them to put in the green box. So, the left box was blue. Kai was spending the evening with her boyfriend Ronan at his place. They were eating popcorn, and a movie was playing in the background. Suddenly, Kai decided to trick Ronan. I bet there's a place in this room where I can sit and you can't, even if I get up. Ronan thought hard but couldn't figure out the answer. Then Kai showed him that the riddle did make sense. Where did she sit? Kai sat on Ronan's lap. An elderly lady had poor eyesight and needed assistance. She was living with her granddaughter, Cassie. One evening, Cassie was cooking dinner when she heard glass shatter. She ran into the room and asked what had happened. The window was broken. Her grandmother told her that some dark-eyed, dark-haired boy had thrown a stone into the window and then run away. Cassie didn't believe her. Why? The grandma had bad eyesight, but now she's not even wearing her glasses so she could see neither the boy nor the color of his hair and eyes. Esme was walking in the forest, and you know what? She got lost again. As always, she found the witch's house and asked her to take her home. The witch had just invented a new game, but unfortunately, she had no partner. The witch said that if Esme won, she'd take her home. There were 37 matches on the table. Each player couldn't take more than 5 matches at once. The person who could take the last match would win. Esme could go first. What should her strategy be if she wanted to win? First, she should take one match. Then there are 36 left. After that, she should respond to each of the witch's moves by taking as many matchsticks so that when added up to the number the witch took was 6. Now, let's see if you can think outside the box. (laughs) Mr. Adams opened the door, walked in, and shouted, Hi, honey, I'm home, to greet his wife, Mrs. Adams. She immediately responded, Hi, honey, I have dinner in the oven. Can you take a look at the kitchen clock and tell me what time it is? Mr. Adams immediately called the police and said that his wife was in danger. What's a possible explanation for how he managed to understand that?
Mr. Adams was blind. His wife, of course, knew that. If she wasn't in danger, she wouldn't ask him something he couldn't possibly do. So there. Henry and Mia lived together in New York. They wanted to run away from big city life and celebrate their anniversary in the wild. So the guys used a special online service and found three available options nearby. Bob offered his cozy treehouse in the woods for a reasonable price. Julia offered this fancy geodesic dome with all conveniences. It's a two-hour drive away from New York, and Crystal offered an old mansion that she'd inherited from her granny. Can you help the guys make the right choice? Take a closer look at the picture of the dome. It's located near the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which means this property is in Italy, and it can't be two hours away from New York. And Crystal's granny's ghost is still in the house, so Mia and Henry should choose the treehouse. The guys contacted Bob, booked the house, and hit the road. Mia is a famous blogger, so she decided to post all milestones of their journey in her stories. Can you spot any differences between these two pictures? Here they are. What about these two pictures? There are three differences. What can you say about these two? Can you see three differences? Here they are. While the guys were driving along a highway, someone threw a can of paint into their car. Mia and Henry stopped at the nearest car wash and interviewed four other drivers. Bill said, My truck has to be perfect. I'm going on a date this evening. Jack said, I'm going to meet my business partner at the airport. I want to leave a good impression. Lily said, Honestly, I don't need to have my car washed. I just stopped here to visit the restroom. Ryan said, my boss gave me this coupon so that I could wash my car for free. Who stained Henry and Mia's car? Lily. Her right hand is stained with the paint of the same color. And besides, she has a print of Mia's face on her t-shirt. She's definitely obsessed with her. The guys washed their car and continued on their journey. They had to choose one of these three roads to reach their destination. The first one went through toxic swamps. People often get lost in that area. The second path went near a river with creepy sirens. Their singing made everyone jump into the water. And a band of angry robbers was waiting on the third road. Which way should the guys opt for? The second one, they can close all the windows, turn some music on, and drive past the sirens very fast. Mia suggested visiting the farmer's market to buy some fresh produce for their romantic weekend. When they entered the marketplace, three sellers offered them apples, but only one deal was safe enough. Can you help the guys make the right choice? Seller number one offers very old apples. Take a look at the date on the box. They expired five years ago. Seller number three offers very beautiful apples. But pay attention to his assistant. She's putting shoe polish on the apples to make them look better. So, Mia and Henry should pick the second seller. Henry and Mia left the market and put all their purchases into the car. Suddenly, Henry realized that he'd left a bag with cabbage at the farmer's stall. He returned but couldn't find the bag. Henry questioned three people he saw nearby. Vera said, I only eat fruit, mister. See, I've got bananas and apples. Bella said, Yes, I saw your bag. The seller put the cabbage back on the shelf. And the seller said, I don't know what's going on here. I spent the last 10 minutes in the bathroom. Who's lying? Vera. She hid the cabbage under her elegant hat. Finally, 
The guys reach their destination. The treehouse is even better than in the photo, but can you spot anything weird in this picture? This raccoon is wearing sunglasses. The owner of the treehouse, Bob, lives in another country, and the house is located 15 miles away from the village and other people. That's why Bob installed a special digital clock on the door. When Henry booked the property, Bob gave him a six-digit password. But unfortunately, Henry had lost it. Here's a hint. M80. Can you help the guy crack the code? These symbols are mirrored digits. Split them apart and you'll get the code 1133CC. The guys unlocked the door. But as soon as Mia entered the living room, she got very scared. She asked Henry to call the police. Why? The treehouse is in the middle of nowhere. Who lit the candles and the fire? The house was locked. Henry checked all the rooms, but found no clues. What about you? Any ideas who that could be? That roof window is open. Someone crawled inside the house before the guy's arrival. And now that someone is hiding under the bed, see? The guys called the police. Officers promised to arrive within an hour. Mia decided to take a shower. When she returned to the living room, she realized that Henry had disappeared. Mia searched the garden, then checked all the rooms in the house and returned to the garden again. But she failed to find any clues. Can you help her? The hot tub was open when Mia began her search, but now it's closed. Pretty suspicious. Mia was walking through the garden. Suddenly, a man in a mask popped out of nowhere and pushed her. Mia stepped on a trap and fell into a deep well. She yelled, Please help me out! No one answered, but Mia's phone pinged. The masked man offered her to play a game. Otherwise, she'd have to stay in the well forever. Here's the first riddle. I come in many different colors, and I get bigger when I'm full. I will float away if you don't tie me down, and I will make a loud sound if I break. What am I? Mia nailed it immediately. What about you? The correct answer is a balloon. Here's the second question. I can jump, and I can climb. With many legs, I swing from tree to tree. I can make a house much bigger than me. What am I? Have you guessed? It's a spider. And the final question. I come out at night without being called. I'm lost in the day without being stolen. What am I? Can you help Mia? The correct answer is a star. A hatch opened at the bottom of the well. Mia went through it and got into a creepy basement. There, she found three ways to freedom, but every door hid some danger. A fire-breathing dragon was sleeping behind the first door. The corridor behind the second door was filled with high-voltage wires. And a vampire was waiting behind the third door. Suddenly, a message appeared on the screen of the girl's phone. Hurry up! Soon the walls will close in and smash you! Which way should Mia choose? She should wait until the walls are close enough so that she can scare the vampires away with this stake and go through the third door. When the police arrived at the treehouse, they found Mia and Henry at the porch. Henry had just woken up. The robbers had put sleeping pills in his coffee. The officers searched the area and found some clues. 
They concluded that the criminals were planning to leave the country by train. Unfortunately, no one knew what they looked like or how big the group was, so they stopped four suspicious people at the railway station and examined their baggage. Can you figure out who's innocent? Why would a bald man need shampoo? And this supposedly blind person has a flashlight. This guy is carrying three tubes of toothpaste, but no single toothbrush. It seems that only the third guy isn't a criminal. Three friends lived not far from one another and often met to drink some coffee together. Their names were Mr. Blue, Mr. Red, and Mr. White. One day, they noticed that under their coats, they were wearing t-shirts of different colors, red, blue, and white. Mr. Blue said, Hey, Mr. White, have you noticed that we're all wearing colors that are different from our actual names? The man wearing the white shirt answered, Wow, you're right! Can you figure out the shirt of which color each of them was wearing? Mr. Blue can only be wearing white or red, but we've already learned that someone else is wearing the white shirt. That means that Mr. Blue can only be wearing the red shirt, and Mr. White can only be wearing a blue or red shirt. And the red shirt is already taken, so Mr. White is wearing the blue shirt. Then, Mr. Red is wearing the white shirt. Mia and Henry decided to spend the night in a hotel nearby. The manager said that they only had three free rooms. Can you help the guys choose the best option? This room doesn't have any doors. That's weird. And this room has a cracked mirror on the ceiling. It's too risky. The second option looks pretty safe and nice. The guys checked in and Henry asked Mia, well, where do you want to go now? She answered with this riddle. You used to visit me when you needed to know, but I've been lonely since the internet was born. What am I? Have you guessed? The correct answer is a library. In the library, the guys met these four students. One of them is broke. Can you guess who? Student number three. Her uniform is too large for her body. It must have belonged to her sister.